decks here. Uh, there's a look at Jan's deck, and in fact, you'll also be looking at Kai's deck here. So this is a mirror. This is a weird control deck. Shark Typhoon has been named as one of the best cards here in the mirror. Do you agree, Mani? Yeah, of course. Shark Typhoon is going to be huge, not only as tokens, but if either player is able to resolve a Shark Typhoon throughout the counter magic, it's going to be nearly impossible to beat. We see a lot of counter spells, but there's no way to deal with a resolved Shark Typhoon. So <laughs> people like seeing hard casts. And hard this cast is the, it, hard cast This it. is the matchup. We may see a fight over it. So definitely going to be important looking at that Shark Typhoon. That card draw is going to matter. And you know what? But that removal, not really going to matter. We're probably going to see a lot of it being taken out post-board. All right. This is set to be a good one. Jan Merkel versus Kai Buda. It's a mirror. It's is it control. The winner goes to the championship match. Who will it be? Riley and Corey, take it away. Welcome to our feature match here for this huge match between Jan Merkel and Kai Buda. My name's Riley. I'm joined by Corey Baumeister. And these two are playing off in the lower finals for a spot in the qualifying match, Corey. And the winner of that best of three match will, uh, best of three matches, I should say, will go on to the world championship. So these two, they've already put in quite a shift, but there is a lot of winning left to do for one of them. Jan Merkel on Is It Control, as is indeed Kai Buddha. This is a mirror match between uh, two friends and uh, people, I, I, too, I believe, Corey, as well, people who obviously worked closely together to, to yep, put this, uh, this together list. For this, yep. make, make this list what it is exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, this is going to be complete nonsense to quote uh, Kai about this mirror match here. It's, it's it's very, very draw dependent. Both players are extremely skilled. So we're going to see who draws a lot of these expressive iterations, draws these Shark Typhoons, some of the most important cards. And one thing I want to point out as well is both of these players really like their gruel matchups. So as far as they're considering, the winner of this is, should be highly favored to take that world championship spot. So this is huge. Yeah, waiting in the wings, Gavin Thompson uh, will not be pleased about. I mean, I guess the deck that he's certainly going to face, which is obviously is a control and yeah. either Merkel or Buddha too. Obviously terrific players, Buddha with one of the most impressive um, uh, resumes in Magic's history. I pulled up MTG Wiki just to get across it. The page is still loading. Yeah, uh, it's still which gives scrolling, you a sense still buffering. Of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm worried. I like I don't know if my scroll wheel is going to be able to take it as I uh, I, I got to like 2002 There's and I was like, right, I'm going to yeah. calm down. I'm going to start a fire here. Well, anyway, I mean, I, I <laughs> we were we were literally watching or looking at the one stat together and both of us were just questioning if it was even true the fact that he won two pro tours, won the invitation, won a GP within almost a month span. Like that's insane. Yeah. That's absolutely oh, yeah. insane. Yeah. He's done a lot of winning, and he's trying to do a little <laughs> bit more today. This game and yeah. this match are going to be uh, a little slower here, as we can see. You know, control mirrors tend to be uh, slower and more drawn out affairs. So you can set yourselves down and get comfortable and uh, and uh, enjoy watching these two players go at it with this is it control deck. Newly, uh, newly reconfigured, I, I guess you could say, with Yorion as its companion. Is it control kind of the spiritual successor to the Is It Dragons deck with Goldspan Dragon and Prismari, uh, Galazeth Prismari that was flying around. Although I guess it, it really is a very different deck by now, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. This was the Noriyuki Mori, um, I, an iteration of that. You know, Noriyuki Mori was playing Midnight Clock mm -hmm. as kind of that card advantage spell. It was only 60 cards, but, you know, he was definitely the sculptor of this deck. This testing team picked it up and, and saw that it really had a chance and had some legs to it and, well, gave it some bird wings. So kind of took out the legs, I guess, if you will, and added a bunch of sharks. And and here we are. And, and the deck's been very good. Didn't do too great in the MPL gauntlet, but here in the Rivals gauntlet, these two have been dominating with it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they really have. And now one of them will progress to the qualifying match, whereas we said Gavin Thompson waits in the wings. But right now... 
A lot of magic to play until we get there. Shark Typhoon in the hands of both players here. We've identified this already as one of the key cards in this matchup. Had some chanting earlier from the news desk, hoping that it would be hard cast. I know all the mm -hmm. vultures in the chat will certainly be hoping for that. Everyone loves to see a hard cast Shark Typhoon. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out so far with the dynamics of the hand, you may take a quick glance and look and be like, well, Jan Merkel has a lot more things to do. I would put advantage Jan Merkel. But really, the main thing in this match is the advantage lies in the lands. Yeah. Kai has a lot of land drops, is going to make a ton of them. So Jan Merkel is feeling the pressure by missing land drops. And we're going to see a lot of kind of scrambling to make sure you hit land drops. So we might see Prismari Command doing some looting here, aggressively cycling sharks sacking the omen try to find lands on top because that's really what it's about in these control mirrors hitting land drops cycling sharks uh kind of something that we would even see back in the day of the wilderness reclamation mirrors that's really all it turned out to be it was just who would make bigger sharks and commence the end game stuff like that yeah let, look let's go back to fundamentals here when we talk about <laughs> a, a control mirror one of the most important aspects to consider is who blinks first and you don't want to be the person who blinks first you don't want to be the person who taps your mana during your turn to i mean typically it's resolved something like a planeswalker or you know if we go back uh, far enough things like etherling or whatever else but you don't you want to hit your land drops every turn in a vacuum you look at merkel's and go, oh great he's got infinite counters but he's got all sorts of business but no in this situation buddha is actually ahead just because he has extra lands and being stuck on five lands is not what you want when you are yep. playing a control deck it, it's weird to put it this way considering that buddha's hand in the abstract is weaker with those red removal spells but in the sense that he'll continue to hit his land drops that is that's number one i mean it sounds yep. almost too basic to be true but broadly speaking a control mirror in in so many cases just comes down to who has to who has to blink first and and, and play something because otherwise they're discarding the hand size See, I think those are some really, really solid points, Riley, but I gotta disagree with you on the sense of not wanting to blink first. Whenever I play Yorian and I blink out my omens and stuff, right, if I'm doing right, that first, right. I have a huge advantage against my opponent Man. who is not blinking out these same things. So I, I, I gotta disagree with you, Ben. Cora's got the whole squad laughing. Jeez, here it is. And <laughs> we see Omen of the Sea here sacked for some lands. I believe it was land, two lands kept on top as well. So that's much better here for Merkel. Much, much better. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see those field of ruins where normally you think, ah, those aren't going to be that big, but the essentially hexproof 7-7, seven, seven, you know, 7-7 seven, seven Ward 3 yep. with the Hall of the Storm Giants, that is something you have to deal with as well. And if you're unprepared and you kind of forget about it for a second, all of a sudden a smack from one or two of those and you're just going to lose. So field of ruin is pretty important. Um, we don't see one from Kai. So at some point, Jan Merkel could just be like, all right, I'm just... I'm just going to attack with this, and what are you going to do uh, to that? So that that might come up a little bit later. Yeah, against a, a red-blue deck that isn't playing uh, cards like Brazen Borrower. I mean, Brazen Borrower wouldn't do it anyway because it's non-land permanent, but I mean bounce spells in general. Yeah. Uh, Hall of the Storm Giants, really difficult to answer, particularly with Ward 3. Uh, so as a 7-7, seven, seven, you know, it doesn't get hit by most burn spells. The three mana means that you're going to have to not only two or three for one yourself, but also just spend four billion mana to do so. So, you know, you're absolutely right identifying that as a key card. And one of the reasons that Merkel will be pleased that some of his lands are Fields of Ruin. As it is, though, yeah. Kai continued to hit his land drops. We talk about blinking. He's going to cast this Yorion, which I, I think counts as blinking first in both in both senses, in that he's tapping his mana, but also hoping to, to blink out that Omen of the Sea. Not going to happen, though. It's disdain. Oh, Nessence Scatter, I should say. Sorry. Yeah, and getting to the point where we're saying land drops are good, okay, we're starting to get to that line where it's it's getting to be a little bit not so good. Kai is starting to really flood out at this point. If you're pairing a couple land drops with some shark typhoons, excellent. Mm -hmm. That's that's oh, yeah. the ideal. But that right business. now, Kai is feeling the pressure because, well, Jan missed a land drop or two. So Kai has the information as do we, that that's six spells in hand, for sure. Like, there's, it, it just has to be. Otherwise, uh, nothing else would make sense unless outside of, like, a misclick from Jan Merkel. Um, so right now, Kai has to be a little afraid that there's a lot of gas over there, and it's just how much of it is red base removal, which he's not afraid of. In this situation, Buddha is probably feeling safe behind that disdainful stroke. There's nothing that Merkel's going to be able to resolve here, you know, nothing like a four drop that can be backed up with the Sorit coming or something like that. Omen of the Sea reveals Bone Crusher Giant, Hall of the Storm Giants. I don't know how good the 
Bone Crusher is here. Yeah, I don't think either one of them are good enough, especially because Kai has the other two Hall of the Storm Giants already. Oh, that's and, true. He's well, got one in hand and one on the battlefield, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's three Field of Ruins on the other side. So that uh, checks notes doesn't add up, that's for sure. So I got to give up on that plan that Hall of the Storm Giants is, is going to be a way for Kai to win this. So both of those bottom. That's the and bit. Shark that's the best draw. There we go. Much better. Much better stuff here. Problem is, no way to defend it. We'll probably just want to cycle it away. You know, we talked about wanting to see hard car shark typhoons, but yeah. jamming that against the hand that Merkel had is be very, very optimistic to say the least. So here's an interesting spot, Riley. This oh. is kind of one of those bluff scenarios that we maybe saw from uh, Jean Emmanuel Dupra yesterday. If you attack with this 5 5 shark, it's very possible that Jan Merkel's, and in fact, probable that he has one of the sharks with that treasure, can make it a 6 6. But if Kai attacks, is Jan Merkel going to want to actually do that? Because, well, then Kai could re resolve like a QR best to see out or something. So I bet we see an attack from Kai just because it seems very tough to actually snap this play off. And yeah, it's going to work. Nice attack there by Kai. Yep. Down to 10. Merkel. He can't. He just can't tap out in the main phase, man. You just can't yeah. do it. Like this, it, as you say, it would mean that we would be able to resolve something huge, whether it's a QR best to see God or even just that shark typhoon that we know that's in hand. So instead, Big Shark come an end step after the damage has already been done. Yep. And if Jan Merkel had perfect information, he probably would have flashed that 6 6 shark in and blocked, though, and just said, Yeah, do you want to cinderclasm and lose a shark? Sure. Um, I guess you can cast Shark Typhoon yeah. then as well. So that's a little risky, but. I don't think you'd want to give your opponent a chance to resolve a Shark Typhoon. He's expressive yeah. iteration. And here's the rough thing about. Uh, the triple field of ruin draw when you're casting expressive iteration does cut you off of your colors. Not that Merkel is particularly interested in, in keeping red mana open here. The only card that you'd want to cast is something like a Prismari Command, uh, which is obviously off the table now with that Temple of Epiphany. Well, he does have a mountain in hand, but he probably just wants to play this temple. I mean, keeping red mana at this stage is not that, not that important. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, when it comes down to this mirror match, outside of expressive iteration and a few Prismari commands, you're basically mono blue against mono blue. You didn't you don't want the red cards. You know, you don't want to be drawing frostbites, you don't want to be drawing cinderclasms or or scorching dragon fires. And like Monty was saying, those cards are probably gonna come out come post board. Merkel's found enough lands and he's gonna start bombing bombing them with a scry. Let's see if there's an attack with a six six. There's not. And another one. shark typhoon now. It's gonna be like cycled seven. away for Oh, I don't even know if numbers go that high. This is one of those <laughs> one of those um, situations where you just you click the plus 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 button until arena's like that's too far. Yeah, like you, you, you click it and you go you go like x equals eight and arena's like you can't pay for that. It's like all right, x equals seven. Arena's like yep, you got it. Okay, good, good, good. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. And the shark himself picks up another shark typhoon. That is a huge draw yeah. step. That's all you want to be drawing at the late stages of the game. And you know that shark typhoon really could have put Kai in a position uh, to take down game one. And game one's the really, I would say, much more luck based game because it's just if you draw a bunch of frostbites you're going to lose. You know, yeah. there, there's not too much play to it. Once it gets to post board where a lot more counter magic comes in, then it really will be testing the skill of these players a lot more. They're both so good and they're, they're packed with the same cards that it's not going to be that big of a deal. But drawing that shark here is just so huge. Well, the storm giants, the play is a tap land. And now do we see an attack with a seven, seven? Is there a reason not to attack the seven, seven here? Well, he didn't attack. He didn't attack already, right. and yeah, it it is pretty interesting to me to not see that attack because, well, it's... there wasn't even any red land available. Of course, you can feel the ruin and then get a mountain and then cinderclasm, yeah. but I'm wondering what Kai is trying to set up. Maybe add another piece of red removal, like a frostbite or something, and use that to just clean up this creature. Right, and just be in a position where he can attack with his, all of his sharks with impunity. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously got a plan. It's not like he accidentally clicked through it. Like, he, he's obviously <laughs> got a plan here. And also playing that uh, hall uh, tapped rather than the Fabled Passage meant that he made a 7-7 seven, seven instead of an 8-8. Eight, eight. So something's coming together in Kai's mind. We just have to wait and see what it is. There's, there is the draw that pieces together to kill the shark. Now, we see a lot of counter spells and in fact kai 
has some face up information with that sod coming just because there's no other foretell cards. It's uh -huh. not actually face up, but it's it's that's it what might, it is. It might Most as well be, yeah. That. Yeah. So I like this from Kai here. What Kai is saying is I already have a ridiculous attack. So I'm going to overload your mana. I'm going to mm -hmm. make you use Field of Ruin on this hall because, well, otherwise it's just going to be another attacker and cut off two mana, essentially, and then go in with these sharks and say, well, now you're a little bit lower on mana, so you can't cycle and make an 8-8 shark, for instance. Yep, it's tying up some of that mana. Still got six available here for Kai. And then we'll see what his play is. He can go Scorching Dragonfire, Cinderclasm, Stomp to get rid of the sixes. <laughs> Uh, but of course, knowing that uh, Jan has got at least one and probably more counter spells, that would be a uh, an interesting play to make. Here it is. Okay. The old interesting, huh? Cyndaclasm deals one. I guess this is just so the five power shark can attack into this one. Yeah, using that mana that was floated from the hall. That makes sense. And yeah, this is a huge attack. It really is coming across for a whole lot of damage. And and here, I mean, what can you do? You have to block a, a seven power. You, you still die to this. Like, you, is there anything yeah, else that Merkel like has? He's got, he, I mean, he can try to frost. start like frostbite and cyndaclasm and stuff. Yeah, we have, we have ways to stop this and disdainful stroke doesn't really do it. No. So it, it looks like, it looks like Jan will be able to survive this. Well, there's two damage as well from the sh from the stomp. Don't forget about that as well. Yeah. So I... Jan's going to be very, very close to dead by the end of this turn, you would have thought. So here's the Cyndaclasm. This has been kicked. Looks like it's been kicked. So now Prismari Command can deal with one of the sharks, the 5-5 five, five shark straight away, or you can pair Frostbite plus Prismari Command up against the other shark. That one's running a big risk because if there's any counter spell from Kai, then it's a problem. So we probably won't see that. I'm wondering if we even see that Prismari Command. Yeah, I, I bet Frostbite on the 5-5 five, five is the safest play, even though, once again, if Jan Merkel had perfect information here, he would love to be killing that 7-7. Seven, seven. And he and now he's he what Jan Merkel is doing right now is is weighing the risk to reward here. Like if I get one of these spells countered on that shark, dead on the spot. But if I just go to kill the other shark, can I beat that seven seven anyway? So that's what Jan is is kind of asking himself right now. He's gonna point the frostbite at the five two here. That should yeah, take it out of the equation. This is just saying to me that with drawing so many cards and without really any counter magic being cast um, so far from Kai, that there just has to be a counter spell for this Prismari command, right? And as it stands, there just isn't. And Scorching Dragonfire here to target the other shark, which has three three damage marked on it because of the two Cyndaclasms that have been cast. Is this going to prompt out a counter spell from Yarn? It looks like it will. Yeah, there's the sword coming. Yep. That's the one cast from Exile, even though there's one mana left available for Yan. I think he just wants to hide the fact he's got another one in his hand. So here is that stomp to put Yan to one if Kai chooses. But once again, then you're kind of wide open for a Cure Best of the Sea God. So yeah. I like leaving mana open. Yep. Um, but the, with the way it stands, uh, yeah, I guess you can like play Yorian here. That gets Disdainful Stroke. Looks like this shark is just going to cross the finish line unless this Prismari command can find something big. Yeah, Prismari command to loot and uh, draw two, discard two, and try to find an answer to a 7-7. Seven, seven. But, you know, it, it's funny how in a situation like this, you just want unsummon. Like, that's all you'd yeah. want in this situ situation. <laughs> if you're Jan Merkel, it's just an unsummon. Never mind your lightning bolts and your stomps and your shocks, whatever else, your frostbites. Mm -hmm. No, you'd actually just want actual literal unsummon. You know but, what's uh, funny about that? I think both on. of these players, with how long they've been playing, they probably originally had to evaluate that specific card, right? Like, Unsummon was originally printed, and they're both like, huh, interesting card here, you know? Well, this Welcome one goes the way of the German juggernaut. Kai Buda picks up game number one. He was the one who drew more Shark Typhoons and was able to Shark Merkel right out of the game as a result. But things are going to change enormously. Look at that. Look at the changes that are being made. Oh, my goodness me. Let's see if it's identical. Most, most of the sideboard, really.
No, uh, a couple of differences here. It looks like uh, Jan Merkel taking almost all of his copies of Cure vs. the Sea got out, and of course, Cinderclasm Burning Hands straight into the sideboard. On the other side of things, obviously, Cinderclasm and Burning Hands out, but it's only one copy of Cure vs. the Sea God. So Buddha likes copies two and three, especially on the draw here. Um, as for what cards come in, I think it, it looks the same to me. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the same cards coming in, but Merkel favors Prismari Command over. Cure best the Sea God post board, it seems. Yeah, I tend to favor that too, because the one thing that's really big is these maze mine tomes. Mm. But but okay, here is a one here's one telling aspect of this. Prismari command on the play is much better than Prismari command on the draw because you can destroy Maze Mine Tome the, the turn your opponent yeah. plays it. So we'll I bet to activate it. Yeah, I bet it'll switch. Um, if, you know, Jan Merkel were to win this game, you might see it the other way around where Kai wants to bring back in those Prismari commands. When, if, yeah, if he, if, uh, he ends up being on the play for game number yep. three. Yep. Sure. All right. Here's an omen of the, uh, omen of the sea here during Kai's end step. It's going to get a null. It's going to get a null. Get the value while you can off of a uh, conditional counter spell like that. And a null also in the hand for Jan Merkel. Yeah, it doesn't have any red mana. Not that that's a huge issue, of course, in, in this particular matchup. You will want to cast that Prismari Command eventually. But Kai now, sitting pretty, he's got, a, got quite a good hand here, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. And look at that glimpse of freedom. It's actually, you know, it's definitely not for this matchup, right? This is for rogues. It's an escape card. But with this game, how long these matches go, how many counter spells will get thrown mm -hmm. at each other, it's not crazy to think that glimpse can't draw three or four cards over the yeah. course of a game. So that that is a really, really nice one, doing its best think twice impression here. Maybe be yeah. able to think twice, maybe even think three times. Think four times even, we'll see. Yeah. It's a lot of thinking. Too much. A lot of thinking. And that's yeah. what happens in these control mirrors, man. You gotta <laughs> think. You gotta think. Here is a glimpse of freedom. Is this getting counted? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so, but yeah, we do see that. Oh, test of oh, talents. Oh, test of is talents is a good one. one. Sorry, I didn't see the. I just I sort of pick up a blue card. I was like, really? But yeah, test of talents is a great one. Just exile that. Get that out of here. <laughs> and take a little peek to see what to play around mm, here as well. Yeah, the the information is another key part yeah. of uh, of the puzzle here. Just giving you a sense, having a look. Like, oh, geez, yeah, actually, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it turns out your hand is pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Or for instance, you know, I and to see, look at this. Jan is is gonna check out how exactly oh, Kai is sideboarding yeah. as well. Gonna gonna piece that together, but also just being able to look like now. I highly doubt Jan Merkel going into Kai's seventh turn is not gonna leave open one mana for a null. You know, for instance. Yeah, test of talents giving you a, a lot of information. Now it doesn't exile any other copies of Glimpse of Freedom for the simple reason there aren't any. It's just a one off. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that you know. Reoccurring card advantage like Maze Mind Tome, like Glyphs of Freedom, can be so critical in, in prolonged mirror matches like this. I think Merkel chose very wisely in firing yeah. off that test of talents and, and removing that as an option for Buddha as the late goes as the game goes late. No, I think that was a, a really good call as well. And look at this flavor fail from Kai, from Kai. Had a card that uh, Jan Merkel wouldn't have seen coming, but now foretold it, and now he can probably see it coming. Now he can well and truly see it coming. Yes, indeed. All right, another negate off the top's a nice one here. Looks like the Sky Noodle's going to be put into Kai's bowl. And back over to Merkel. A lot of draw right. go happening here, but that's what you've come to expect in matches like this. And here's that big draw for Jan Merkel, drawing it right on time. The Shark Typhoon, Kai mm -hmm. made it look easy because, well, that's what Kai did on turn seven, eight, and nine is Drew Shark Typhoon. If Jan can do that, you know, this mirror match isn't that simple when it boils down to it, but that is a huge factor. These Shark Typhoons are going to be the biggest things. And if you can chain those together, you know, chomp, 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 here comes the Sharks. So a 4-4 four, four now for Buddha to have to deal with. In it comes, and First Blood goes the way of Merkel this time around. Both players setting up with decent-looking hands, although you'd have to say that Buddhas does look a fair bit better if you don't uh, include the fact that he's under siege from a 4-4. Four -four. Yeah, and I mean, basically even when you when you put it at that shark, because sharks, while while they are still just the best card in the matchup, post-board, there's even less ways to deal with sharks. We saw combinations of Cinderclasms and Frostbites and mm. Scorching Dragonfires, oh my, to be able to deal with these sharks. <laughs> but now, at this point of the game, there's not that much removal. It's funny that 
the best card in the matchup usually will get worse post board, but here the best card in the matchup actually gets better because all of that uh, yeah. the creature removal. The only card that the only cards that really deal with the sharks are being taken out. Brazen borrower is an important mm-hmm. uh, important piece of technology here against these tokens. But yeah. I believe there's only yeah both players only playing one copy. So and that's always been the evolution of these decks. If they get really big in standard, these blue yeah. based uh, decks, first you go to the shark counterspell plan to be able to deal with it, and then the next level of that is shark counterspells plus brazen borrower. And brazen you know borrower. we we haven't seen a lot of that because they didn't expect a ton of mirrors outside of their teams, and they were right. But you know maybe on the latter, if uh, if we were going to continue, that's probably the evolution of the deck we would see. Phoenix of Ash comes down now for Kai Buddha. We're talking about the fact that these uh, decks don't have too much red post board, but Phoenix is certainly an exception to that. Escape card's very useful in prolonged matches like this, and now Kai's got a clock of his own, so he won't be too unhappy about that. Still double negate in hand. Oh, sorry, excuse me, single negate, disdainful stroke, and the sword coming on Portel. And I want to bring some attention to um, that there from Kai. Kai made an attack where if Jan Merkel had a shark there, it was going to be a complete blowout. But Kai, you know, risk, mentally put the risk-reward thing in his head and said, if you have another shark, I, I can't win anyways. So you might as well play like that card doesn't exist mm-hmm. because the game's over if, if, if Jan had another 6-6 six, six shark there. And Kai knows it. An exclusive look at the roof of uh, mm-hmm. Kai's kitchen there as his <laughs> webcam gets knocked. Maybe now, hoping for the ceiling of his draws here, which would be more Shark Typhoons, I think. Frostbite thank taking you, thank out you very much. this <laughs> Phoenix of Ash for now. Of course, it can come back later if whatever gets the chance to flash back with escape, but doesn't look likely, considering the very dominant position that Merkel is in with this uh, four-four shark. Would a knock down to just eight? Going to negate this frostbite. Wow, very highly valuing uh, this phoenix on the board here. Just trying to block and pump. That's really what uh, what Kai wants to be doing now, or block and stomp and have uh, some counter spells available. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. at this point, at eight, it's it's crunch time. You cannot let this connect anymore. Otherwise, it's getting really, really rough. So I wouldn't be too shocked to see a Sot coming here. And then the cute play that um, uh, Jan Merkel could do would be to Juari Disruption it and stop that three mana being available to escape. Decides it's not worth it. So Prismari Command, Shock Faith is looting here. Draw two, discard two. Going to drop the Annul, potentially. Oh, dear. Considering that Kai has that face-up Curabest the Sea God, no, Juari Disruption seems like the safer discard here. Holding up that Annul, just a back-breaking one mana, mana counter spell that turns off that seven drop that Kai can't really uh, afford to play. Yeah. So back to Yun now, who picks up a Disdainful Stroke. That's a nice enough draw here. Most of the key cards in this matchup do cost four or greater. And Kai now down to four. So he really has to find something. This Phoenix of Ash coming back from beyond the grave is not going to be sufficient to kill the uh, the shark by itself unless there's another red mana. Yeah, and that's the clock. And now what really can we do? I mean, we can bring back Phoenix of Ash, have Sod coming, have Disdainful Stroke plus Dispute as a backup. And I think that's what we're really going to have to do Luckily for Kai is this does come with an escape counter. So this bone crusher giant isn't just stone cold lethal. Mm-hmm. So as it stands, it looks like we are okay to live um, from Kai Buddha's side, but one good top deck here from Jan Merkel, another bone crusher giant, a, another shark really kind of, uh, you know, takes over here. Yeah, probably will seal the deal. So let's see what Jan can get off the top of his library here. We're going to see a stomp. Stomp. To the face. And it's going to go upstairs now and halve Kai's life total. He's down to two. And Jan, if he can find another stomp off the top, it's a Dwyer Disruption. But still gets to attack. This is more or less free. There's no red mana. Yep. And so this shark will not be finished off unless Kai had a Frostbite that he could go and get a mountain with the uh, the Field of Ruin. But, I mean, hey, you do that, you tap out, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble otherwise. Here's Bone Crusher Giant. 
This one is going to be seen coming by Kai and get countered. Kai really needs a Shark Typhoon here. That is the one kind of hole um, that, that is left available here. Outside of that, playing Yorian is probably... Oh, Ooh. and he's found Ooh. it too. Ooh. He has found a, the, the one draw. card, Corey, that is going to potentially keep him in this one. I count a 5-5 Shark as well, so we'll see if Jan Merkel goes for it. Kai has been playing in such a way that he did not have a Shark Typhoon before this. So it would make a lot of sense for Jan to just go for it. All right, well, Kai on two. Jan with a 4-4 Shark. And now comes Yori on here. And this is testing the waters to see, do a Shark Typhoon check, basically, because I'm pretty positive that Disdainful Stroke to the left is known. So Jan Merkel's spidey senses are going to be tingling here. Going to be a little wary to attack with this shark. Wouldn't be too shocked to see no attacks here. Yep, really smart play by Jan Merkel there. The, the other side, the flip side of this, was that... Uh, Jan Merkel could have attacked. If this shark ambushes, you just get to hard cast shark. That was the other option yeah. from Jan Merkel. But I do think I like this line a little bit better. So Kyrobis the Seagull joins Kai's hand here. And a bone crusher Ooh. giant at the draw here for Jan, which is lethal. Yeah, there's nothing in Kai's hand that can stop that right now. So this is really looking like eventually this is going to go game to Jan Moritz Merkel to force yeah. a game three between these two buddies uh, to see who's going to make it to play against Gavin for that world championship seat. So Stomp and Frostbite take down this Yorion here. And the moment Kai blinks, there is a lethal burn spell in Jan's hand. Jan being see. super patient about it yeah, as well. Yeah, he's waiting. He's waiting. He doesn't need to risk it here. He's got a lethal spell in hand, and he doesn't intend to waste it. Yeah, I bet we just see a giant shark here as well. Just Jan Merkel's just going to be like, deal with this first. If for whatever reason you have a brazen bar or something like that to stop these sharks from killing you, okay, then I'll stomp you. But this is very smart play. If you just throw that stomp out there, you're like, you see a stomp, and you're like, I'm going to cast it, I'm going to cast it, and then they have negate, and then untap. All of a sudden, you could be behind. So a shark typhoon for six instead here. And this... This is, a, I mean, the, the problems just keep piling up with Kai here. It's getting worse and worse by the minute. Expressive iteration, snow-covered island on top. Both of them go below decks. Kai's looking for something different. Looks but like there's one brazen for? borrower Doesn't in the know. list. Can't you find know, it. it. It was the one brazy B and didn't find it. Even if we did, that stop was still going to finish off this game. So, ooh, Riley, we get a game three. Game three between these two players. Shark Typhoon, really the deciding factor between Jan Merkel and Kai Buddha, as we've seen this is it control match, un, uh, mirror match unfold. I mean, from the get-go, we were talking about the fact that Shark, uh, the Shark Typhoon really is the key card in this matchup. And uh, that is that is rung true. That is That has remained the case in both games one and two. And now... With everything tied up at one and one, well, is it going to be a question of who can draw the greatest number of shark typhoons who can find that uh, that cycling enchantment? <laughs> and look and at that sideboard the there, Riley. Mind Flare coming in. Kai took out all the Cure of the Sea Gods, but get that Mind Flare in there as a way to deal with sharks. I like it. Yeah, another, another I, guess, I guess, removal spell in a way. Yeah. Stealing sharks, getting them out of the way, maybe enabling attacks of your own. Okay, pretty good hand from Kai, as in the sense that we have Shark Typhoon, have a Cure Best the Sea God, so maybe that graphic was, uh, or that's the one of that we left in, nice. And from Jan Moritz Merkels, normally you just look and you're like, wow, that is not a very good hand, that's a lot of lands, but like we were saying earlier in game one, you want to be making land drops, so this is still a pretty strong hand. Dwyer Disruption snipes that Omen, which isn't too bad, you do always feel pretty good about uh, getting that across the line and now Kai continue to hit his land drops without too much to do with them so far I don't think we'll see Shark Typhoon cycled away for one common enough play usually but not something you yeah. necessarily want to do in this matchup unless your hand is looking pretty bad and you know, Kai's hand is fine it's not great but it's fine yeah we Bone might giant we just really a naked 4-3 here Corey 
Yeah, we might see it, because otherwise we probably would have bought Yorian. Um, there's not too much you want to protect against. I guess like a Maze Mind Tome that you want to have a Nola up, and that's the best draw in Kai's deck right there. He is just, he doesn't have enough lands um, to be super comfortable to cast all the spells. Didn't really have enough gas. This is exactly what Kai wanted to see. And puts the Scorching dry, Dragon Fire in hand. That comes along at a good time as a way to deal with yeah. this Bone Crusher Giant. I really like Yan deploying this Bone Crusher Giant early, putting pressure on and, you know, trying to get the party started. Uh, put some pressure on Kai to maybe, you know, this aggressive posturing actually could potentially pay dividends. We saw the fact that, you know, if you can just land a Shark Typhoon and get him for a couple of attacks, it'll do some work. Here's another expressive iteration, this time in the hands of Yan. Find some good stuff of it. And that was a much better iteration here. Iteration into iteration in the early games, turns three through six or seven. Expressive mm. iteration is the best card. Set eight through the rest of the game, Shark Typhoon's the best best card in this matchup. So being able to chain together expressive iterations now to find Shark Typhoons for later is exactly what I would want to be doing if I was down here playing against either one of these players. Fable Passage goes uh, hunting and finds a an island here with plenty of mountains in hand here for Yun. That does make sense. Bone Crusher Giant, the second coming down now. This one without a handy answer for Kai to get rid of the 4-3 straight away. Not going to cycle away the Shark Typhoon, of course. And another Field of Ruin here. Yeah, now we're getting to the stage of the game where, ooh, Kai is... We're not able to see his camera right now, but I think this is going to be the point where he would have did a little bit of his signature head nod there where he has Yorian and does not have that one mana available for a yep. null, just yep. in case there's a Maze Mind Tome or something, you know. You can just tell by that hesitation. He was doing his signature head nod there, like, oh no. Was, uh, yeah, yeah, didn't leave <laughs> up triple blue there, so he couldn't cast yeah. Yorian and leave a null up. And it's it's amazing how many of the key threats in this matchup, particularly post-board, are artifacts and or enchantments. Mm -hmm. uh, with stuff like uh, the Shark Typhoon, obviously, is hard cast. But Curabest the Sea God, I know that these players aren't leaving in huge numbers of them, but even one can be decisive. But it's Maze yeah. Mind Tome that you really don't want to snipe. That, that represents four cards. Yeah, and even think about it. This was turn six for Jan Merkel. If he had it, could have just jammed Shark Typhoon, and then you know Kai would have just been like, oh, no. Man, what, what have I done? Yes. Now, what that being said, done? Kai could have just turned around and dropped Kiorabest the Sea God here and still has the option to do so. Now, there is a face-up counterspell because, once again, there's no other foretell cards. So Kai knows that there's a saw coming, so he can, well, see it coming. But... As it stands now, 5-5 five, five Shark is very well equipped to deal with this Bone Crusher Giant, and we'll see how either player wants to play this. This could just be a Shark to block, even though we don't see that very often because you're worried about what we could see as a second main phase spell. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think this is where we go for it. Try to get that free fine. block. Because your opponent, great. because at this point, Yan only has four mana up, right? So it's not like you're going to be punished with a hard cast Shark Typhoon or something huge like that. I mean, the worst card mm -hmm. they're going to be able to cast is, I don't know what, like, uh, they can't even cast, like, Mind Flayer. To... So this is this is really interesting here, because if Yan Merkel just attacked with that Bone Crusher Giant, I don't think there's a way that Kai would have cycled the Shark. Because you you risk Cure Best of Sea Gods, you wish, risk Shark Typhoon. Mm. But with Yan Merkel playing Phoenix it becomes very tempting to block either one of them. And it's going to work out quite well. So I don't, I wouldn't want to say maybe a minor misstep, but something that, uh, you know, could come back to bite Jan Merkel. So Kai, they're blocking the Phoenix, even though the Bone Crusher Giant would have saved more damage. And the reason for that is, oh. of course, the, uh, the Phoenix couldn't be pumped. So as to trade with the Shark, this will require a much greater mana investment from Jan in further turns here. So smart play there from Kai, even though it cost him two extra life. Getting rid of yeah. the bird while it couldn't be pumped made a lot of sense. And it does mean, though, that Phoenix gets to just come back next turn, so you can't really attack too much with the shark. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, never mind. No, Here it goes. Never mind. Kai pulling down your pants once again, Corey, making a fool <laughs> of you as, as the 5-5 five, five, five comes in. Which happens often. And now it looks like we're going to escape this. Uh, no, okay, potentially not. I think we want to play a land first, just because then you have Saw coming plus Test of Talons up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Double counter spell to protect this Phoenix of Ash coming in, yes. And uh, Kai, without really too much to do about it, I mean, he's got that Frostbite, but even if that gets counted, I mean, it is a lot of damage. Like, this is seven damage. 
Yeah, we kind of saw Kai play this exact same way against Lee earlier yeah. in this top eight and be really aggressive. And, well, that didn't work out so great. But this attack um, or th this scenario here is a little bit different. And right now, look at this. Jan Merkel really respecting another Shark Typhoon. This time, he, he kind of guessed wrong last turn. But this yeah. time, Kai doesn't have it. But that is exactly what Kai is looking for. Oh, double frostbite here. Double frostbite for Kai. So there's there are some nice clean answers for those creatures on the other side of the battlefield. And Kai on a respectable 10 life. Let's see if he attacks this time. I mean, this would be the gutsiest attack you've ever seen. Yeah, this one's a, a little a little rough. But yeah, that attack from Kai last turn really did signify the fact that he has another Shark Typhoon. So another really nice bluff attack there by Kai, now that I uh, take a step back from it and look at it. And now we're just in the Shark Typhoon expressive iteration waiting room for both the players. Mm -hmm. That's yep. all they want to be drawing. Nice little insurance policy with this and although that's going to uh, target a, a key card. Well, that's not a good draw here for Yarn. Finding a four spike this late is probably not going to do much work. In comes the Phoenix, offering the trade. So the one nice thing that Kai can do here is just block and mm -hmm. then make Yan Moritz Merkel pump and then use a frostbite. Uh, we'll see if... Jan wants to make a fight over this. For instance, maybe a test of talons on one of them when you're holding another one. That really would force Kai's hand to play that other one. I would assume we just see this go away and just escaped to come back. That's right. I mean, you can always bring back the Phoenix as well. No, it's going to be test of talents. Well, this will force Kai's hand. He needs to play this frostbite one way or the other. Where is it going to be pointed, though? At the Bone Crush Giant, get rid of that, or just again at the Phoenix to make sure the shark sticks around? Looks like it's going to go with the Phoenix. And here, that saw it coming deemed too valuable to be thrown away at a burn spell. And Test of Talents at this point, like, extirpating the the last copies of Frostbite. Maybe Kai's not too unhappy about that because it makes it more likely that he'll draw Shark Typhoon. Yeah, no kidding. And that honestly might be a reason why Jan just leaves Frostbite in the deck, right? You do not have to take it out. I I bet we, we yeah, I think we took him out of the graveyard. We didn't take the last one out of the main because he's just like, yeah, go ahead and draw that one. That's less shark typhoons you're going to draw. But taking him from the graveyard is less escape cards that you can mm. uh, have to be able to bring back Phoenix of Ash or Glimpse. Kai considering using a Field of Ruin on Jan's Field of Ruin here. Yeah, well, it's tapped out. It's an opportunity, especially since Kai is kind of Field of Ruin flooded here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's and... got a third one in hand. So I think he's just wanting to use his mana and make sure that if he draws a Hall of the Storm Giants, it's got the greatest chance to stick around. Yep, and we know there's another Field of, field of Ruin in Jan's hand. So not necessarily going to be the biggest factor, but still the main factor here is drawing Expressive Iteration or Shark Typhoons. Yeah, that's what they want to see. Oh, Mind Flayer, though. Ooh. Spicy. Mind Flayer. Now... In the same way that Jan knows that Kai has a an annul, Kai also knows that Jan has a saw it coming because, as we've mm -hmm. said, it's the only foretell card in the seventy five here. So, a really interesting dance being done being done by these two players with the with the information they have about what's going on in each other's hands, and that test of talents revealing the contents of Kai's hand as well to Jan. That's just more information that Jan has to wade through here. Yeah, and it's really interesting which one you want to take. Which is no matter what, the first one's getting countered, and yeah, I'm kind of interested in that as well because if you play Mind Flare, you're still really priced in to counter that, right? Because that is taking Bone Crusher Giant, and then if you resolve Cure Best the Sea Goddess, the second spell, and there's a Shark Typhoon for Jan Merkel. Wow, that was huge. That could have been. That could have been a seat at the world championship top deck from Jan Merkel. Like it, it, it cannot be understated how big these shark typhoons are in this mirror match. I'm into the sea here. And oh, I saw it coming. Isn't too bad, but it's not that good against the, against the shark typhoons that mm -hmm. can, uh, you know, uh, that really have dominated this matchup. The one into thing it, it is... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, heading into this match, we talked about the fact that Shark Typhoon was going to be the card to watch, and Corey, that's proven true so far. Yeah, and the one thing that this side coming is kind of tempting for is the fact that you keep it on top, and if there is a giant shark, you try to mind flare it, 
and mm-hmm. back it up with saw it coming and you know take your opponent shark but decides not to go for it i i like bottom as well just really trying to maximize your chances to draw those those two cards we've been talking about Phoenix of Ash, though, a decent enough consolation prize. It is a hasty threat and also is able to block sharks. So. Phoenix of Ash deployed here. Looks like this is an 8-8, which is very large. Yes, indeed. Big old shark. And it's going to get the chance to attack at least once before this mind player has anything to say about it here. Those were, those were bricks. Okay, but there is a Phoenix of Ash as well and plenty of red matter to pump it here, so Kai's really going to have to get on the defensive. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see uh, the shark come in there. I mean, the shark can just be double blocked, but that Phoenix represents seven damage as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Kai on a, on a somewhat precarious just 10 life here. Facing off against an 8-8 eight, eight, and a fire-breathing phoenix that can bring that total damage done to up to 15, if needs be. Yeah, this is tough. And and Kai's just really planning on his next turn and kind of is thinking, of course, the creature I want to steal the most is the 8-8 eight, eight shark, right? Mm -hmm. So leaving that one alive, you're kind of incentivized, but you could just lose the game on the spot, right? To a Prismari Command or a Bone Crusher Giant. And the game's over. So that it seems like we, I was going to say we were going to see a double Just block a almost for sure, but a chump, block yeah, a chump there yep. and then block this and try your best to steal that shark next turn. And with what we see in hand, it's going to work. Is it going to be Mind Player that keeps Kai alive here oh, and gets him so through cool. to this qualification match? We've talked about this card from the very beginning. Round one, we were having a laugh at the fact <laughs> that Mind Player was making some, uh, making some waves in this standard format here. And now it could be the card that gets oh. Kai across the line and a brazen borrower. That is oh. a huge draw here for Kai. Brazen borrower, effectively a hard removal spell for the and token sharks. Here's the really funny thing. All the Test of Talons last game, there was not Mind Flare in the deck. You know, so, yeah. so Jan did not really expect it. But there it is. There it is. Mind Player steals the 8-8 with an insurance policy. Brazen Borrow a Petty Theft ready to bounce. Well, after this uh, this uh, Phoenix of Ash, it's not going to be around to bounce. But a Null still up in case there's something that goes it's wrong the the, with an artifact or an enchantment. It's a Bone Crusher Giant. Looks like Phoenix will come back across. Is there enough red mana? Only can pump it. Can only I oh, can pump it twice. It's not enough. Yeah, can pump twice, you then need... can use Bone Crusher Giant, so that's seven, that's nine damage. So is this now a, is this now a force block with the Bone Crusher this Giant? This is a force block, yeah. You have to block here, yeah, and Kai recognizes that it is. He's not too worried about it. He's taking the shark out of commission for one turn, and that actually might just be enough here because the Mind Flayer will trade with the Bone Crusher Giant. He can block the Yun's Phoenix with his own Phoenix, and this Brazen Borrower will be able to deal with the shark that switches loyalty once again. But now yeah. Merkel has stuff like a second Bone Crusher Giant. He has here Yorion as well, which in a pinch really could, look... could blink the uh, the Phoenix of Ash. Doesn't do it. Sorry, go ahead. you got to really look at that attack from Phoenix of Ash last turn from Kai. And in hindsight, if you didn't attack with that Phoenix, you're able to just block and mm. you get to keep Mind Flare. And there was no way that... Kai was going to lose that 8-8 eight, eight if that was the thing. So that somewhat aggressive attack might bite him. But look at this now. We could brazen borrow this Yorian, and mm. then we have five. Were we missing a land for lethal here? Five, eight, five, six, seven, nine. No, we were still a ways away. So, yeah, yeah you long, really got to think. The, the, the Phoenix is really expensive to pump. You're like, oh, yeah, just chuck some red mana oh. into it. It's it's actually really, it's really expensive to pump the Phoenix of Ash. So that attack with Phoenix of Ash really could have been extremely detrimental to mm. Kai on that last turn. So is the Phoenix going to get in again? Threaten to trade with the Orion. Surely you can't leave yourself open to this. Not with a Phoenix on the others. Oh my goodness, can. he's attacking. I guess he's got the he's got the brazen borrow to block the uh, to block the other Phoenix of Ash, but that dies to the to the Bone Crusher Giant that's in hand here. 
So a block here from Jan Merkel. I can't believe the aggression from Kai Buda. We've seen this throughout the entire tournament. He has just been on the front foot, swishing the willow around, trying to put opponents, you know, back in their place with these aggressive, uh, aggressive attacks he's been making. Yeah, I think Kai really needed a block there. Um, now we have the petty theft for that giant shark. Get that out of there. Play Brazen Borrower to be able to try to block Phoenix. But as we see it, that stomp is going to say no to that. So three mana. Looks like it'll be one pump up to five. And Kai here calculating exactly how much mana he can afford to spend. Don't forget there's that Dwari Disruption. If this turns yeah. out to be Chekhov's Dwari Disruption here <laughs> because Kai taps too low, it's going to be incredible. Absolutely incredible. All right, off the top here for Jan Merkel. Let's see what he can find. It's a negate. It is a negate. And this means that this Petty Theft is not going to clear the 8-8, Corey. There is a hard yep. counterspell now in the form of negate. And I think this is going to be enough to keep Kai Buddha down. And this attack is costing him dearly. Jan Merkel poised to take his seat in the qualification match for the world championship one invite remains and Jan Merkel with this play is one step closer to snagging it for himself here Kai Buddha facing a lethal attack and across they come Kai goes down Jan Merkel with is it control wins the mirror shark typhoon sails him across the line and the German juggernaut is brung low 